This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. I'm Stefan, this is my Terry Reckoner Soul ZDH deck. Sorry, here's the general Terriel. She's just a okay. white, black, red, 4 7, flying vigilant. Type of 2, reanimate a creature at random from an opponent's graveyard. Right. So we want to basic land, very simple. Just very few of them. Alright, this mana lands, multicolor. Again, just self explanatory. Mm. And then we get into random utility lands, Thespian Stage. You can copy any of the following lands you're about to see Lotus Veil, tap for three of any color. Mostly it's in here to keep my land count low for things like land tax and Weathered Wayfarer. Always keep those active. Mystifying Maze, just to double up on the effect of Maze of Ith. Help protect myself. Strip Mine, deal with troublesome lands. Slayer Stronghold can help most often just to activate Terriel immediately or anything like an Avatar of Woe, Intrepid Hero, something like that. Arctos Cardinarium again, keeps my land count low, keeps land tax and Weathered Wayfarer active. Maze of Ith, I already mentioned that, protects myself. High market for one keeps my creatures from being stolen or tucked into my deck. It also can be used to put something in the graveyard if I want to reanimate it, get an enter the battlefield effect again, or a uh, death trigger. Basilica, same as Carnarium. Rick's Muddy, discard. It's very good to have when I'm playing out of my opponent's graveyards or my own. Mana Rocks, just. Help me accelerate into the late game, skip over the early. Main fire border post is a main rock that again keeps my land count low. Solemn is one of those cards that works well when I'm, you know, throwing things into my graveyard, bringing them back. Just help me draw more cards, get more land. Eternal Dragon, fetch up land I need, mana fixing, get my dual lands, shock lands. Land tax I already mentioned, there are very few basics in here, but even using it once or twice hits me multiple land drops and probably fixes me for the rest of the game. Weathered Wayfarer, like land tax, need to have fewer lands. Help search for my utility lands, strip mine, high market, maze of it, things like that. Nim Death Mantle goes well with Ashnod's Altar here. That's what a lot of this deck does. Works well with these fallen creatures. Kakusho. Loop him through the graveyard, sacrifice to Ashnod's Altar, add two mana for four mana, bring it back from the graveyard. Do it again for every open two mana that I have. Angel of Despair, same thing except destroying permanence when she enters. Aurelia, after the first combat step, trigger a second one. Sacrifice her, bring her back, get another combat step. As long as I have two mana, I can take an additional combat step. It can be five, six a turn. Yose, lock one or more people out of the game, skip their untapped steps every time it dies. Archon, a lot like Angel, except when it dies, and I can exile something troublesome that I don't actually want to put into their graveyard. Valkyrie is another good way to bring my own things back, or I can steal something of my opponents if I want to do that. Animate dead again, bring back something of my own, or an opponent's. Abzadot's aid, say they destroy one of my enchantments, my lands, my artifacts, like the ones that I just mentioned. Good for getting those back where my normal reanimation can't do that. 
Puppeteer click again reanimation that also works very well with Ashnod's Altar and Nim Death Mantle. I can sacrifice it twice before I have to death mantle it, meaning I can do that as many times as I want, steal as many creatures from their graveyard as I want. And I can sacrifice them all to the altar, start netting mana, go infinite with it. At the end of it all, just keep the creatures, attack with haste. Shield Dread is again reanimation with the upside of controlling my opponent's board. Profane Command, reanimation again, just with an attacked on removal ability. I can hit them for a large amount of life, especially if, with, if I've gone infinite with the Puppeteer click. Very rarely will I use the X creatures gain fear, but it's nice if I need it. Inka is just simple reanimation, resilience, and she regenerates. Unburial Rites, reanimation. Bring things back from my own yard. Flash it back if I need to. Dread return. Same thing again. Bring something back from my yard. Flash it back if I need to. Except this one has a built-in sack outlet for Yose, Kakusho, all those cards that I want to be putting into my graveyard and back out onto the field. Sun Titan. Very good with a lot of things. Can bring back my Necropotence if someone destroys it. It's a hell of a target. Strip Mine. I can be sacrificing that myself. Bring back smaller creatures if I need it. Mostly for my enchantments and my artifacts, though. I get pretty aggressive with my own life total, so a Wrath that gains me life is very good. Plus, if I'm going against somebody that isn't in my colors, it can be completely one-sided, or at least partially, against someone that only shares a color. Day of Judgment, very simple. Destroy all creatures, wipe the board. Black Sun Zenith is... Well, it's a repeatable Wrath. The odds of seeing it twice are low, but it gets rid of that indestructible and anything that could be a problem. Damnation might as well be another Day of Judgment, just can't be regenerated. As to your command, again, just another Wrath can destroy all creatures, all artifacts, all enchantments. A lot of those things can be a problem. And if I destroy all my enchantments, all my artifacts, it's good to have a way to bring them back, such as with Sun Titan or Obzidat's Aid. Minecrank, I just use to fill my opponent's graveyard, playing out of it a lot with Terriel. Sire of Insanity, this deck relies mostly on permanence, not so much on spells, meaning once I've put everything on the board, I don't care very much about my hand. And getting rid of theirs can be much more beneficial. Ragtos Return fills their graveyard with things I might want to take, does some damage if I have Mind Crank, that's an added bonus. Can make them discard and mill. Mind Twist, very good. Early discard through Soul Ring, Mana Vault, whatever sort of artifact ramp that I have. Just make them discard their hand at random. Mortify like over standard removal, it just gives me the option of getting rid of a pesky enchantment. Carnagan Exile is better than uh, Destruction. A lot of EDH decks tend to play out of the graveyard to some extent. It's just repeatable removal. Intrepid Hero, sorry for how ugly it is. Uh, repeatable removal, power 4 greater is very relevant in EDH. A lot of large creatures are present. Sabo Tavok is mostly there just to be a general killer. It's other than that, a large creature. Avatar Vogue and repeat, repeatable removal through Mind Crank and Discard. I might even be able to cast for two mana. And then a 6 5 Fear is always good at getting through for the damage. Vencer's Journal. Again, I get very aggressive with my life total, mostly for drawing cards. This helps me make up for that, and I can keep all the cards I'm drawing. Helps me draw cards. Very rarely does the one damage kill any creature, but over time, one damage to player can add up in a long, grindy game. Necropotence, one of the primary reasons for wanting Venser's Journal. I can pay a lot of life at once, gain a lot of life the next turn, keeps going up in the end, and then I don't have to exile the cards. Rexy Arena, just lose one life, draw a card at the beginning of my upkeep again. 
losing a lot of life to draw cards, I try to make up for it. Blood Gift Demon, lose life, draw cards, I have a lot of that going on. Say 5-4 flying body is never a bad thing to have. Rune Scar Demon, you know, just a large creature, I can tutor for any card when he enters. Again, that's one that can be very good with Alter, Nim, Death Mantle, High Market, a Dark or Valkyrie. However, I want to keep looping him. Repeatable tutors, very good thing. Only a one-time tutor, but for two mana can get you that early thing that I need. A Phyrexian Arena, a Necropotence to help me get through the rest of the cards I want. Enlightened Tutor can also search for Necropotence or Phyrexian Arena. Or the pieces like Ashnod's Altar, Nim Death Mantle, or something like a Soul Ring Mana Vault if I really need that. Empiric Tutor, I mean... It's just to get any of the cards that you've previously seen or will see. Liliana Vess. Again, very rarely do I use the discard, mostly it's for the tutor, but discarding is a good thing to be doing in this deck. Sort of Light and Shadow is just another way to get back the creatures I'm throwing into my own graveyard a lot. People can stop Altar, they can stop Death Mantle. This is just another backup plan for that. It also protects my creatures from a large amount of removal by giving it pro white and black. And it's a little bit of life gain here and there. Feast and Famine has helped me cast multiple spells per turn. I've already been over. Discard is very good here. Swiftfoot Boots. Haste is nice, but it's mostly just to protect my creatures. Gideon just sometimes removal, sometimes a beater, sometimes just helps me stay alive a little bit longer. Wear tear just I means self-explanatory or destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, a lot of those things can cause problems. You can cut someone off of mana pretty well. There's a lot of early soul rings. Tesa is a good deterrent for attacking me in a multiplayer game. Most people don't want to impale their creatures. 4-4 four, four pro creatures, also a good blocker if someone does try to attack. Bitter Blossom, just a good way to generate blockers. Also very good with Alter, High Market if I really need that life, but it won't gain me a whole lot. Elspeth just, again, generates blockers, can give my creatures the extra power to attack, and if I get to the ultimate, she's kind of a target, so it's hard to do. Having everything be indestructible is game-winning. Blazing Archon. I mean, creatures can attack me. There's nothing more to say about Blazing Archon. And Vishino Heretic. There's a lot of mana rocks, mostly, is the most relevant artifact I see. He does a little bit of extra damage, which isn't normally a lot, but destroying a soul ring, destroying a mana vault, a mana crypt, something like that can really help in the long run. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite.